Welcome back to Econ Tutorials. In the last section, we were talking about production possibility frontiers. In some texts, they call it uh, production possibility curves or production possibility frontiers. It's the same thing. We talked about a hypothetical Farmer Jones, and Farmer Jones could produce either wheat or coal. And whether he produced wheat or coal was really determined on maximum productivity of his sons. He wanted to keep his sons busy. But we didn't mention anything about price in that, that section of the video. We're going to go there today, but let me just back up a second and just start out with just a, something I made up. And it's probably not close to reality because in reality, just about all production possibility curves bow outward from the center. And they, and they do that because of efficiencies. And they all bow outward. But I decided I would make one and I just threw in some numbers and when I graphed it, it bowed the opposite direction. So it's not really normal, but it will work for this illustration. So we could show a production possibility frontier in a schedule like this in which we have points on a curve and I've put the points over here as dots. So it's possible if we worked as hard as we possibly could to produce all milkshakes and in my hypothetical example here I'm saying well if we worked as hard as we possibly could and just focused on milkshakes we could produce milkshakes but we've also got the capacity of making hamburgers and so if we worked as hard as we possibly could giving our existing facility we could produce up to four units of hamburgers so the two extremes are we could devote all of our resources to producing hamburgers in which case we could produce four units or we could produce as much as we could possibly could with all our resources and we would be able to produce 10 milkshakes so those are the two extremes if we produce no milkshakes we're all the way over here to zero with milkshakes then we can produce a maximum of four hamburgers but if we don't want to produce any hamburgers, we're down to zero, we could produce a maximum of 10 milkshakes. And I put some points in here, in between, and I just made these up. And again, it's not a very realistic example, but it will work mathematically. If we, let's see, we would go to point E, 4 and 0, this would be point E, and then this would be D, and this would be... C and B and A. So A would be zero hamburgers, 10 milkshakes. Point E would be four hamburgers and zero milkshakes. So let's throw some numbers on this. Let's say that it's, it's about the same cost and we make the same price and the same profit margin if we produce a unit of hamburger as we produce a unit of milkshake. And let's just arbitrarily say a nice round number of $1,000. We can earn $1,000 if we produce a unit of milkshake or we can make $1,000 if we produce a unit of hamburger. Now if we're looking at that, we're saying, okay, now that we've got some price involved here, we can see where we want to be on the curve. But before we go there, if we are here at point A and we want to produce a hamburger, at point A we're producing all milkshakes, but for some reason we decide we want to produce a hamburger. If we produce a hamburger, going from zero to one, our opportunity cost is going to be giving up five milkshakes. So our opportunity cost is always what we give up. So to go from point A to point B, what we're giving up is five milkshakes. To go from point B to point C, well, we're going to be giving up two milkshakes. Similarly, we could say, well, if we're at point E and we want to go to point D, in other words, we have no milkshakes and we want to produce one unit of milkshakes, we would have to give up one unit of hamburgers. 
Now let's look over here and say, okay, we produce a unit of hamburgers, unit of milkshakes, and this is kind of obvious here. If we produce all hamburgers, we're going to make $4,000. If we produce all milkshakes, we're going to make $10,000. This is a no-brainer. This one is easy. And if we're at any point in between, we would make four, four, five, six, ten thousand dollars $10,000. So obviously in this graph here, we should be at point A, which would be over here on our production possibility curve. But let me just change the parameters here. Let's say that we go from a market price in which one hamburger equals one milkshake, and all of a sudden the market starts to change, and prices in the market change, and now one hamburger is worth three milkshakes. The price of one and the other are changing. Now if the price changes such that one hamburger now has the same price as three milkshakes, now where should we be on our production, our hypothetical weird looking production possibility curve? Well, we can't add hamburgers to milkshakes, and besides, they're of different values. So how could we figure out where we should be on this production possibility curve by adding apples to apples, or something that we can add to one another which are of the same unit? Well, looking at this, we said, well, if one hamburger equals three milkshakes, well, then we could make this one hamburger here and go in the back alley and exchange it for three milkshakes. Let me do this in red. So that would be three milkshakes. And if we made two hamburgers, we I'll just put a little X through that. If we made two hamburgers, we could exchange that for six milkshakes. Why? Because if we've got one hamburger, we exchange that for three milkshakes. We make another hamburger, we exchange that for another three milkshakes, and we come up with six. Similarly, this would be nine milkshakes, and this would be 12 milkshakes. Now, if we convert these hamburgers to milkshake equivalents, because we're going to make the hamburgers and immediately trade them for milkshakes. Now, where would we want to be on our production possibility curve, our hypothetical production possibility curve, based upon the new price relationship between the two products that we produce? So we can add milkshakes to milkshake equivalents, and up here, we're going to have a total of $10,000. That's cool. Here we would have five, six, seven, eight. Here we would have six, seven, eight, nine. Here we would have 10, and here we would have 12. Now looking at this, when the price changes, that says we probably are going to move on our production possibility curve. Production possibility curves have no prices in there. It has nothing to do with prices, it simply says, how much can I produce of unit A? How much can I produce of unit B? And what do I have to give up of unit A to produce more of unit B and vice versa? So in this case, we would take one of the two, in this case, hamburgers, and convert it to the other milkshake, milkshake equivalents, and then re-add together to come up with the maximum dollar amount. In this case, we would want to produce 12. Now notice again, we're working as hard as we can possibly work to be on the production possibility curve, says we are at maximum productive efficiency. Where we are on that curve would be allocative efficiency. Where should we allocate our resources, more to hamburgers or more to milkshakes? Now, I want to include uh, a graph in this series so that you'll get a normal curve up here that bows the right way rather than this odd shaping way so that you can do this exercise on your own. But this gives you an idea of how we can have the production possibility curve and include the element of price in our production possibility curve.